Hi, I thought I'd give you an update on where I'm at with my Shape Oco 2. I did a, an assembly video on this machine a little while back and I've been using it. It's really a great benchtop CNC. It really is. And I've been using the Easel software that Inventables offers. It's free, it's online, and you can easily create things and then it'll create the G code that you send to the electronics and this thing will cut it out. So it's it's great. I, I love the software. It's almost like the Tinkercad type style where you just kind of place your blocks or circles or text and then say, you know, create the create the G code. And then that software will actually control the CNC machine. What it does is through the internet, it's it's you get on through your browser and it'll take the G code file and it sends it to your computer and then your computer is connected to the electronics through a USB cable. So everything works fine as long as you have a good internet connection. And that was my problem. Out here in the garage I've got an internet connection that's iffy. Once in a while it drops out or gets really weak. And that's apparently what happened when I had this thing cutting out of design because somehow it got a glitch during that time frame and it drove this thing into the board locked up the shaft and the motor couldn't spin and it just burned up. Now fortunately my wife is nearby and she smelled it and unplugged it but by then the, it was gone. The, the Dremel tool was gone. So what I did then is I went and got this tool that I had. I, I had this in my toolbox. haven't used it too much. I bought it years ago to cut out countertop for a sink when I was redoing my kitchen and it worked really well. It's like kind of like a low cost router and it's got a clamp and everything for it so you can you know set it on the counter and cut things out. Well I took all that off and then I custom 3D printed some brackets here so I could mount it to the Shape Oco and then I've been using this to cut out some things and it works really well. In fact it's far more powerful than this whole thing. So I've been using that and now an easel, what I do is there's an option to export the G-code and then download it to your computer. So then I'm just running from my computer to electronics, no internet connection. So I don't have to worry about that glitch anymore. So it's been working pretty good. But there's one problem. This thing is too loud. Listen. <laughs> It's just too loud. So I was looking at uh, Inventable's website and the X-Carve, their new, their replacement for the Shape Oco 2, their next generation, uses this, a quiet cut spindle. And it's actually an option for the Shape Oco 2. In fact, they designed that X-Carve, the next generation, that it's compatible with the Shape Oco 2. So I can actually upgrade this to a lot of the features that the X-Carve has and a lot of the parts and stuff like the same motor will work on either one. So it's brilliant how they did that. They didn't forget us who, who have these, yet people who buy that new X-Carve, which looks like an even better machine than this, much easier to put together. Oh my god, far like, like half the parts I guess. But I got a good deal on this, so I'm not complaining. So I contacted them and said, you know, I did a video for you guys um, about the about the Shape Oco 2. I didn't do it for them. I did it because I wanted to do it. But I saw that they gave a lot of these Shape Ocos to some woodworking guys. And I said, you know, I did a video and I bought mine. <laughs> Is there any way you could help me out here? Because I, I was hoping to get, you know, at least a discount on this or something. They are so awesome. They support YouTube in so many ways, creators like, like me and, and others. They not only gave me a motor, they gave me the full kit, including power supply with speed control and the electronics to hook up to the, to the uh, Arduino and stuff that's on here that controls it and the Gerbil Shield. So now the software can actually control the speed if I hook all this up. But the best part is this thing is quiet. I'm going to start it up here. I just got a power supply here 
and this isn't quite as powerful as the one that comes with it, but it, it, it's great for demonstrating. Listen how quiet this is. I mean, I'm holding it not far from the microphone. This is amazing. Now, it's not cutting anything. Of course, once it starts cutting, you get that cutting sound. But compared to this, it's that thing shutting down is louder than this. This is so smooth. So I'm going to put this on my Shape Oco and then I'm going to install these electronics and show you how well it works. So the first step I had to do is go dig up some wire, some extra wire, so I could extend the wire from the, the quiet cut spindle. So I got my helping hands here and I've got the wire all set up. So now I'm just going to solder them and then I'll slip a shrink tubing over the top of it. Just slide it through the end of it. So get this done first. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Then I'll do the same thing for the black wire and then I'll have an extended length of wire to go from the spindle out to the electronics. Okay, so I got the two wires soldered onto the motor and then I finished the rest of the connections and it really wasn't that tough. They've got some great instructions and an excellent video on the site. But I'll show you basically what I've got because all I did was on this, the Gerbil Shield here, I'll just pull it off. I had to solder a pin here, I actually soldered two just because I wanted an extra ground. Um, but really you just need one pin here, and that's the five volts. And then you've got a ground pin over here, and then a signal. So it's really a three pin connector they have you solder, but you're only using two of the pins. And rather than just solder one, I soldered two on this side. So all five connections, because the ribbon cable, connector cable that they give you is actually five pins. So to me it was easier. So once I soldered those, then I could uh, reconnect this back up to the Arduino here. And I've got, and that just plugs right in. And I've got all the electronics for mine mounted right here on a 3D printed bracket. So all the electronics moves with the with the unit back and forth. You can see the LEDs lighting because as the motors turn they're generating electricity and lighting the LEDs. So that's what I've got going on here. Um, so what I did is there's a relay that this board connects to and I got it right here. So I wired to the relay from the Gerbil Shield and then the positive lead from the motor goes into the relay. And then there's another wire that goes from the relay over to the speed control, the, the motor side, the motor control. And that's all this does. So what I did is that for right now I just use double-sided sticky tape and it's holding pretty good here. And I just mount it right to the bracket so now it's going to stay with it. So it's, it's fewer wires dangling around, especially I want this mounted and close to the electronics because this cable they give you is not super long. So I've got, there's your positive lead going from the motor through the relay and then to the speed control. And then the black wire from the motor just goes all the way across to the other side of the motor socket. So the motor is controlled by the speed control and goes through these two wires but the electronics can turn it on and off through this relay. So that's what this relay does. It's just an on-off switch that's electronically controlled by the electronics controlling the whole thing. So that's how the software can turn the motor on or turn it off through G codes that get sent through the Gerbil Shield. So then the only thing left to connect was to bring the power from the power supply into the speed control and there's a separate port for that and that's where there's 48 volts going into this guy so there's 48 volts going into this this speed control and then it's sending it out to the motor but it's not going to send the full voltage out because you've got the speed control knob by turning this you're controlling how much essential voltage is going to the motor 
So it's, it's, I don't know if it's a PWM or if it's just a variable voltage, but it's, it's either way, the average voltage going to the motor determines how fast it spins, and that's what this thing's doing. And then there's a power cord that comes with it. You connect to the power supply, and that plugs into the wall. So it really is a simple setup. It seems initially complicated, but it, it's really just some wires. And I had this extra wire. This doesn't come in the kit, so you have to get some extra wire. And I happen to have this really flexible rubberized um, insulator wire, and it's really working good. So it'll be very flexible. The only thing I want to do is tie this better back to the USB cable so these move together, and then everything else is going to kind of be separate. Now the motor, of course, should be mounted up here. So I'll have those two wires coming back. So I'll have to do a little bit of routing, but this stuff's so flexible, I don't have to worry about it breaking. The only thing I want to, I have to worry about is where it goes into the connections. Make sure those are strapped tight so nothing breaks. So let me show you what else I did with the motor. Okay, so the motor, I actually found these custom brackets on Thingiverse, and I 3D printed them. Now I 3D printed them at 0.2 layer height and a 90% fill. I, they're practically solid. And I wanted that because I wasn't sure if I needed to drill out the holes and I ended up I did. I needed to drill these holes for these bolts a little bit bigger. And I didn't know if I'd have to drill anything else out. But they're really, really solid and it's a great fit. So they just go on the motor. I just gotta, I gotta clamp these bolts down. And then there's holes at the back here, there'll be bolts that come through this and mount it right to the plate. So it'll mount it right up like that. Makes it so easy. So much better than these metal brackets that they gave you and that I use with the other motor because they tend to crush, they crush that other motor because it was plastic case, the, uh, the Dremel tool. And I didn't want this to get crushed, so I just, I just didn't trust it. These you know, flex a little more, but it holds well. Plus, these brackets have this extra flange here, this hole, and that's for a vacuum tube. So when this is mounted, I can actually run a vacuum through here, and then what I'm going to do is 3D print a nozzle that comes down next to the router bit. So while this thing is cutting, it's going to vacuum up all the dust. And hopefully, because this thing got really dusty the last couple cuts I did. So I can clamp this down and then route this right to a little mini shop vac I got. So this 3D bracket is awesome. I'll put the link to this that I found on Thingiverse. I'll put that in the comments below. So if you want to print one of these, you'll know where to get it. So, so now I need to mount this to the uh, gantry here and then I'll be ready to route everything and test it out. Okay so I've got everything mounted. Here's the motor mounted to the gantry and I had to lower it down to get it to the right height. And then the wires just got connected tie strap to the existing flex cable here. The relay is mounted through the double-sided sticky tape, and then everything is strapped together to the USB cable, and then it goes back to the motor control, or the speed control, is on top of the power supply, and I just use a couple strips of double-sided sticky tape there, and then a piece of double-sided sticky tape to hold the speed control knob. Eventually I want to mount this to the back with a couple screws, but I didn't have the right screws to fit into the power supply. So right now it's just sitting there. But it's out of the way, so all that cable comes back to the connector for it to power the electronics, and then the USB coming into the computer. So now on the computer I've got the Universal G-Code Sender software running, and at the command line I can type M03, and the motor will start running because it's sending that signal to the electronics, and turning on the relay. Then I'll send M05 and that shuts it off. 
So now I go into the easel software and here's the logo I want to create. The outer line I actually did as an outside line and then the letters themselves I did those as a fill. And the bit is really wide so it's not going to take much. And then I did them all as a 1.5 millimeter depth. Well, 1.519 to be exact. Then I go up to the, uh, the material section and I set how much I want to cut per pass. And this time I do 0.1 millimeters, so not a whole lot. It's going to take about 15 passes. And then I'm doing it at 200 millimeters per minute, which is actually kind of slow, but I wanted to try that. And then I set the bit size to the 8 millimeters that my bit actually measures. Now I click on Advanced and I click on Generate G-Code. And once the G-Code is available, I just click on Export G-Code and it downloads as a file. And I'm ready to use it. Now I open up the G-Code file with just a text editor. And then I add the M03 right after the Z-axis moves away from the home. So it drives over to the edge and then starts the motor. Then I go all the way to the end of the G-Code and just before the final Z drive, where it drives it back to the home position, I put M05. This shuts the motor off. Then I save this file and I'm ready to import it into the G-Code sender. So now I open the Universal G-Code sender and then I click on the File Mode tab and Browse and go find that file I just modified. And then once it's loaded, I can click on Visualize and this will give me a visual representation of the toolpath. The yellow bar is the actual cutter and the blue lines are the toolpaths. So that looks good. So then I go to machine control, make sure I'm at the home position and then click the reset zero to set the zero point. Then I click on send and it goes to the shape OCO. I'm doing a final cut outline to finish this off but I wanted to just show this section just how quiet this thing is I can talk over the top of it and it just cuts away this is really incredible compared to what I had before now I don't have the vacuum running I haven't designed the tube yet for the vacuum but I have tried it when the vacuum is running it's a lot louder than the motor so now the vacuum is too loud so I guess I need to try and find a quieter vacuum. But overall, this is really working out great. It's, it's definitely recommended. And here's the finished logo, all painted up, ready to go. So that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And if you'd like to see more CNC type videos, let me know in the comments below. I'll also put in the description links to everything that you've seen here, plus links to the new uh, X-Carve from Inventables. And I'll put links to the assembly videos so you can see how easy it is to assemble and compare it to what I had to go through to assemble my Shape Oko 2. If I had to do it all over again, I think I'd love to get one of those X-Carves. My next improvement on this thing is I'm looking at extending these rails. Not the gantry or not the top part here. I just want to extend these rails and make it longer so I can do longer signs or longer intricate decorative pieces. And then I want to mount this whole thing on another bench. So that's probably going to be a video in the future, but way in the future. So that's it. See you next time.